Hello and welcome to today's lecture. If you recall your first studies of algebra and up to now, you will see that with each important algebraic structure comes a class of lesser structures on which this structure acts. With fields come vector spaces on which the fields act by scalar multiplication. With rings come modules. With groups come sets on which these groups act, and so on. Today, we will look into sheaves of modules over schemes. These are the analog of this philosophy for schemes. So algebraically, the idea is to get some sort of sheaf on which the structure sheaf of a scheme acts. Geometrically, the idea is that given a curve or a variety or more generally a scheme, you want to have modules over the scheme that vary depending on where on the scheme you are, but do so in a coherent way. More specifically, the ring OX of U is given by the structure sheaf for any open subset U of X. And so you want to study objects that are modules over this ring in a coherent way. Why do we want to do this? Well, that's because not all sheaves that are important are sheaves of rings, and not all sheaves uh, that can give us information about a scheme uh, sit inside its structure sheaf. For example, we might want to study tangent spaces that vary along a scheme. So this gives us the tangent sheaf. Uh, vector spaces give us vector sheaves or vector bundles. Uh, when we define closed subschemes, we needed ideals, and this relates to ideal sheaves that globalize this phenomenon, and so on. So, let's get started. So we fix a scheme X, and we want to define a pre-sheaf of modules over X, also known as a pre-sheaf of OX modules. So what is it? It is a pre-sheaf M on X, meaning a pre-sheaf of sets on X, such that, first of all, for each open subset u of, uh, of x, m of u is a module over the ring ox of u. For things to be compatible, we require the addition and scalar multiplication to commute with restrictions. That is, whenever we have an open set v, elements a, b of the module associated to v, and a scalar, meaning an element of the ring associated to V, well, then all of these things we can restrict to uh, a subset U of V, an open subset. And what we want is that adding first and restricting then is the same as restricting first and then adding, and the same with multiplying by scalars. So this almost looks like the definition of restriction being a homomorphism of modules, but this is the idea, but one should beware because these are modules over different rings. So M of V is an OX of V module, while M of U is an OX of U module. So take some time to digest this definition. Then a morphism of pre-sheaves of modules consists of a morphism of modules for each U that are compatible with restrictions in a reasonable way, namely that commute with restrictions so you can uh, draw the appropriate commutative diagrams and put this definition precisely. In short, morphisms are natural transformations between the sheaves viewed as functors. So uh, what we have uh, defined now is a pre-sheaf of modules, or if you remove the word pre everywhere, that's the definition of a sheaf of modules over X. And a sheaf of OX modules is also called an OX module, just uh, dropping the sheaf word. 
And this is precisely how you should think about it. You should think about it as a module jointly over the whole sheaf of rings OX. So let us look at some constructions and examples on these module sheaves. The uh, perhaps first example is OX itself. So every ring is a module over itself and this generalizes to sheaves of modules. So we do have these uh, properties by definition of the structure sheaf OX. Also, we have the trivial module, uh, meaning the sheaf of modules defined by M of U. So M of U is the zero module. This is a module and the uh, properties are trivially satisfied. The first construction that we'll look at is the push forward. So this is a way to compare uh, modules over one scheme with modules over another scheme. So if we have two schemes x and y and a continuous map between the two schemes, it doesn't have to be a scheme morphism, it's enough that it's a continuous map of topological spaces. Then we want to view OX modules as OY modules so we can compare them and look at morphisms between them. And the way to do it is the push forward. So the push forward of a pre sheaf M on X is the pre sheaf F sub star M on Y, whose section at the open set y, U of Y is the section of M at the pre-image of U. So F is continuous, the pre-image of U, this is open in X, and so this makes sense. And we can define uh, the push forward in this way. And one can check that this is a pre-sheaf, and if M is a sheaf, then this is a sheaf. The check itself is straightforward. So uh, this is precisely the statement of this remark that if M is an OX module, meaning a sheaf, then so is its push forward. Now, if you go back and look at our definition of scheme morphisms, that definition looked a bit cumbersome, but now with the language of push forwards, we can make it easier. So a push forward or a scheme morphism is a continuous map uh, F from X to Y together with a sheaf morphism F star from OY to the push forward of OX with compatibility between these two, namely the pre-image under F star uh, of each maximal ideal of a point is the ideal of the corresponding image. So uh, this is our way of making uh, such statements precise as saying that F star should be a morphism of sheaves. The problem, why, why do we need to put this F sub star here? Why can't we say that F star is a morphism from OY to OX? Well, these are uh, sheaves over different schemes, so we cannot really compare them straight away. So this construction is made to remedy this issue in the most seamless possible way. Let's look at a concrete example of a sheaf of modules, namely the twisting sheaf. So now we are looking at projective space over an algebraically closed field, and we take d an integer. So this works for any integer d. And we define this sheaf, OPND, as follows. It's sections at an open set U of the projective end space is the set of all quotients G mod F of homogeneous polynomials whose degree difference is exactly D. 
So uh, this is where the D comes from. And we also require that the denominator is defined so that it, this um, um, quotient makes sense in some way. Defining it in this way, one can check that this is indeed a sheaf. The reason why it is actually a sheaf is that these quotients come from the quotient field of this uh, polynomial ring and the restrictions are just the identity maps. So if two uh, such quotients agree on overlaps, then they come from something global, namely the exact same thing. So this defines a sheaf and it is a sheaf of OPN modules uh, because if you multiply this in the natural way by a regular map on projective space, then by the homogeneity of regular maps, the degree difference will not change. If this seems unclear, go back to the lecture where we define the structure sheaf of projective space and work it from there. Second, if we take d equals zero, meaning that we require g and f to be homogeneous polynomials of the same degree, then we get back exactly the definition of the structure sheaf of Pn itself. Less obvious is the fact that if we take OPN of minus one, this is the so-called tautological sheaf T on Pn. So let's look at what this tautological sheaf is and skip the uh, fact that it is isomorphic to OPN of minus one. So the tautological sheaf is the set of all maps from U to affine n plus one space such that the image contain the point P. So why is it called the tautological sheaf and what does this really mean? Well, Pn sits inside or defined as a quotient of uh, non-zero points in An plus one. It's the set of all lines in An plus one. So to each point in projective space Pn, there corresponds a line that this point somehow lies into before the identification. And so you look at all maps from uh, any open set, a given open set U of projective N space into A N plus one that maps each point into the line corresponding to it. So it is in some sense the most obvious possible, the most natural uh, sheaf over projective space, namely to each point it gives you the uh, uh, module that is somehow one-dimensional over projective space. 